in your various panels and on the timeline and the various tools that we have to work with these clips. I just want to go through a few of them, including previewing these events, these clips, and also splitting them, ungrouping them and finding them. Okay, so in your Explorer window or in your Project Media window, you're going to find these two buttons here, which are basically simply previews. So whatever clip you have selected, it will preview it and it will preview it over here in the trimmer window and you can got a play and stop. You even have this button here which is an auto preview and when you select that any clip you select will automatically preview whether you want to or not. I personally find this a little bit annoying but you can certainly have that option and it will work regardless of whether you're looking at thumbnails or lists. So for example if I go with this button here from thumbnails to lists and then I take this button here, I can still preview it. It doesn't have to be a thumbnail to preview it. Now the same is true inside the project media panel. You've got the same buttons here, they just moved across a bit because we don't have the same explorer buttons that we had in the explorer panel, but we've still got the preview buttons and we've still got the ability to auto preview, to stop and to view it in different ways. So that's one way of previewing the items. This does not note load it into the trimmer. My trimmer is empty. If you want to load it into the trimmer, then you still either right click and open in trimmer or you can drag it to the trimmer or alternatively you can set up your previews of, as I've shown you in a different tutorial that double clicks an item to open it up into the trimmer so you can get your in and out points. So that's one way of previewing your clips to make sure you've got the right one because you might say have multiple takes and you want to go through them and just check them. Also works incidentally for audio files if I click that one. Don't see an audio wave but I do get a feel for what the actual audio sounds like. If you want to change the properties of a clip, by the way, you can select the clip or multiple clips. So this will work across multiple clips, not just one clip. And either right click it and go down to properties, or there is a button just here, which is the properties button. And you end up with this little dialog box here, shows you where the clip is, if there was a tape name, what it was. Also, are you going to use a custom timecode or the timecode of the original file, which is what we're using, and then what the clip is. Now, this is an MPEG-2 HDV clip. If I wanted to change any of these options, I can, say, drop it down here and say, I thought it was a progressive clip. I could make it progressive. I'm not going to change that. Or I can change, say, the pixel aspect ratio and say, I thought it was supposed to be square. So you can change things that you think are incorrect in this panel, and it will change for any clip that is selected. So just be a little bit careful about that. Streams is about what are you looking at? Are you going to look at the video or the audio of the individual event that you're in? But if you're looking at the audio, there's nothing you can actually change. You can only change the settings when you're dealing with the video part of the clip or of the event. So that's finding an item and dealing with those. How about finding events in your timeline? Now you might have a really complex timeline and you need to find an event. Has it been used and if so, where is it? Now I know that this soft C has been used multiple times in this timeline down here. If I select the clip or just plain right click on it, notice that I can go to select timeline events. When I click on that, there are all the timeline events and I can navigate between them. Now you can either do that through the edit menu when you go down to navigate and then you can navigate left by selected events or right by selected events but look at the keyboard shortcut control open square bracket control close square bracket so I'm going to click away and then select the timeline which if you remember is alt zero to make sure you've got the timeline selected so it's now selected and then control close square brackets lets me go through and notice that it's picking up events on multiple tracks okay so it's not just working on one track it's working on multiple tracks and you can quickly find your various clips so if you're not sure that you've used a clip say mm, did i use this one right click on it select timeline events nope it's not actually there let's find one that i am using so i know i'm using for example boat into harbor right click on that one and i can go select timeline events and there it is there. And I can use the standard, not using a control key, open and close square brackets just to go between that event. And then if I carry on clicking, obviously I start selecting and moving between the next event. Okay, so those are standard keyboard shortcuts of moving between your various events. What if you want to split an event? What if you say this is too long or I want to split a bit out and move it somewhere else? How do I split an event? Well, you take your cursor to where you want it to go to and you can either go to edit split notice the keyboard shortcuts s 
or you can right click and you'll see that you've actually got split there but obviously the keyboard shortcut is going to be s so you're just going to tap s and that split the event into two and i can move the cursor along a bit and say s again split it there then i can take that clip in the middle and i can shift it to some other place if i wish to move it there and uh, move the audio up to match it accordingly wherever i want it to go so that's using the split command to be able to find things the other thing to say is sometimes you want to ungroup clips. You want to take the audio out because you want to use the audio somewhere else, or you want to move the video to a different place. Now you can ungroup clips simply by right clicking on the event and looking for the group option, which is here. And then you can choose the one that says remove from group. Notice its keyboard shortcut is U, and to create a group is G. You can also get this by the way from the edit menu, edit, and then you're going down to group and you've got the same options. So with the event selected, I'm going to hit U to ungroup it. Notice that the blue that was around the audio has gone. So I'm just going to undo that so you can see it. This is the event group, so if I select it, both parts move together. And if I, with the top item selected and the blue showing me that it's in a group, if I hit U, it's now ungrouped and I can pull the video event separately away. Now, if I want to group them again, even though they're separated, I have to make sure they're both selected with the control key. Then you can either right click and go to group and then create group. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, so I'm just going to hit the escape key to get out of this menu. And then just hit G, and they're now grouped. And when I move one, well, let's deselect. When I select one and move it, notice I've got the blue selection box around the other clip showing me that these two are indeed grouped even though they've been offset in time. I'm going to control Z a couple of times to get rid of that. Take it back to how it was. And those are now grouped again. And there is one other really helpful keyboard shortcut to be able to sort of temporarily ungroup a clip to create what we call J and L cuts. And I'm going to put my cursor here and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to sort of temporarily ungroup this clip by holding the shift key. So if I hold the shift key and then I trim the end, notice I am just trimming the video. Okay, and that's creating a sort of a J cut. You can see it's almost like the letter J. And what that means is I can have the audio starting before the video starts. So I could have, say, a text introduction or some sort of placeholder in this place. I hear the audio before I see the video, which is a great way of introducing a subject used a lot in documentaries, actually. So we have the audio starting, say you're at a the seaside, you start hearing the sea, you see a title saying the seaside or sea houses or whatever it's going to be, and then you fade into the video. And the same can happen at the end. Again, holding the shift key and pulling it in, you can create what's called an L cut because it kind of looks like the letter L. And you can have the video finishing, the titles finishing, but slowly fading out the audio. So we'd go there and we'd fade out the audio there just to tell people that you're coming to an end gradually and gently rather than just hitting them with a sudden finish. So that's how we can do a lot of previewing, splitting, ungrouping and finding clips in our timeline. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at auto ripple options and a couple of other preference options that will help us with our use of Sony Vegas Pro. My name's Andrew Davis, and I hope you found this tutorial